السلام علیکم اور رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ اما بعد بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از محمد کمر اللہ حسین ڈپارٹمنٹ آف بزنس ایڈمنسٹریشن میٹروپولیٹن یونیورسٹی سلیٹ ویلکم ٹو مائی ورچوئل کلاس روم ایم کے اے کلاس روم ناؤ لیٹ اسٹارٹ ٹو ڈیز ویڈیو ٹیوٹوریل ٹو ڈے وی ول ٹرائی ٹو سی فائنینشیل اسٹیٹمنٹ اینڈ ریشیو اینالائسس ناؤ فائنینشیل اسٹیٹمنٹ اور اسٹاک ہولڈرس رپورٹ سو جنرلی ایکسیپٹیڈ اکاؤنٹنگ پرنسپلس گیپ جی اے پی گیپ دا پریکٹس اینڈ پروسیڈیور گائڈ لائنس یوز ٹو پریپیئر مینٹین فائنینشیل رپورٹس اینڈ ریکارڈس اتھورائز بائی دا فائنینشیل اکاؤنٹنگ اسٹینڈرڈس board f a s v gap generally accepted accounting principles which are used to prepare stockholders uh, report so every corporations has uh, many and uh, varied uses for the standardized records and reports for its financial activities periodically reports must be prepared for regulators creditors or lenders owners and management the guidelines used to prepare and maintain financial records reports are known as generally accepted accounting principles this accounting principles uh, these accounting principles and practice procedures are authorized by the accounting professions ruling setting body the financial accounting standards board f a s b so uh, now what is a uh, stockholders uh, report it is actually uh, for anno uh, stockholders annual report uh, which shows uh, the company's financial performance uh, financial conditions that are the stockholders report the stockholders report summarize and documents the firm's financial activities during the past year so the stockholders report summarize and documents the firm's financial activities during the past past years it begins with a letter to the stockholders from the firm's president or chairman of the board now the letter to stockholders the letter to stockholders is the primary communication from management it describes the events that are considered to have had the greatest effect on the farm during the year it also typically discuss management psychology corporate governance issues strategies and actions as well as plans for the coming year so that is the letters of stockholders and uh, a uh, stockholders report or annual report that publicly owned corporations must provide to stockholders uh, stockholders uh, it uh, summarizes and uh, documents the firm's financial activities during the past years and letter of stockholders typically the first element of annual stockholders report and the primary communication from management 
the four key financial statements one income statement to balance sheet three the a statement of stockholders equity and for the statement of cash flows first one income statement the income statement provides a financial summary of the firm's operating results during a specified period most common are income statements covering a year period ending at the specified date ordinarily december 31st of the calendar year after that here we will see the pro forma of income statement sales revenue less cost of goods sold equal to gross profit less operating expenses here has the list of operating expenses selling expenses general and administrative expenses lease expenses depreciation expenses then we can get the total operating expenses then we uh, will uh, um, less it from the gross profit then we can get the operating profit or ebit ebit so ebit how can we get the ebit sales revenue less cost of goods sold equal to we can get the gross profit minus uh, operating expense then we can get uh, the operating profit or ebit then we have uh, yeah, de deduct or less it from the interest expenses then we can get a net profit before taxes after that we can uh, uh, less the tax we can get it the net profit after taxes so several times uh, the firm has the preferred uh, stocks uh, then uh, we can less it from the preferred stocks uh, dividend then uh, we can get the uh, earnings available to the common stockholders it this is divided uh, uh, that is the co common stockholders uh, income divided by the uh, outstanding shares we can get eps then uh, dividend per shares uh, if the uh, finance manager decide what type of uh, dividend it may be declared then uh, we can get uh, the dividend per share so here uh, here is the uh, uh, calculating systems that uh, calculated by the dividing the earning available to the common stockholders by the number of shares of common stockholders so in the uh, in uh, uh, 60 76262 in uh, 2012 and uh, 60 76244 in uh, 2011 that is our outstanding share so earning per share in 2012 uh, can be uh, calculated in this way uh, 2020 uh, 221,000 divided by uh, 76,262 uh, equal to 2.90 and in 11 uh, in the in the year 2011 uh, we can uh, get 1.81 our EPS in the same way uh, here has the uh, showing the uh, roles uh, how we can get uh, DPS uh, calculated uh, by the dividing the dollar amount of dividends uh, paid to the common stockholders by the number of shares of common stockholders uh, dividends per share in 2012 98,000 divided by uh, 76,262 uh, equal to 1.29 in uh, 2011 uh, 0 0.75 so this amount can be decided uh, by the uh, managers of the firm so in this uh, way we can uh, calculate uh, DPS or EPS so by here, uh, here uh, is the uh, calculating systems of uh, uh, 
uh, need not uh, this uh, yet this uh, time then a uh, balance sheet uh, balance sheet uh, the summary a statement of firm's financial positions at a given point in time that is the balance sheet uh, then current asset current liabilities uh, in the balance sheet uh, you can have the balance sheet presents the summary of a statement of the firm's financial positions at a given time the uh, statement balances the firm's assets against its uh, financing that is liabilities which can be either debt or uh, equity so uh, here is the Bartlett company's examples in 2012 and 2011 uh, uh, so we can uh, see so a important uh, discussions is made between the short-term and long-term assets and liabilities current assets and current liabilities uh, that is uh, that are the short-term assets and liabilities this means that uh, they are expected to be converted into cash uh, or paid within one year or less. While other assets and uh, liabilities along with uh, stockholders equity uh, which is assumed to have an infinite life and uh, considered long term were fixed because uh, they are expected to remain on the farm's books for more than one year. As uh, so, uh, the, there is the current assets and current liabilities. Then we can uh, see uh, long term debt, uh, which is a maturity period more than uh, uh, one year, debt for which uh, paid is uh, not due in current year. That is the long term uh, date. Uh, stockholders' uh, equity represents the owner's claims on the farms, the preferred stocks. Entry entry shows the um, uh, historical proceeds for the sale of uh, preferred stocks. So paid in capital in excess uh, or, or the amount of uh, proceeds in the excess of the power value received from the original sale of common stocks. So here has the examples uh, of Bartlett Company's uh, balance sheet. So you see assets, cash, marketable securities, accounts, receivables, inventories. Uh, these are the uh, total current assets. Land, buildings, machineries, equipment, furnitures, and fixers, vehicles, other, others. These are the total uh, fixed asset. Then uh, fixed asset, then total asset uh, we have in here. And liabilities, accounts, payable, notes, payables, uh, accruals. These are the current liabilities. Then long term debt, uh, preferred uh, stocks, uh, common uh, stocks, uh, paid in excess uh, of power, common uh, stock return earnings, uh, total, total uh, stockholders equity and total liabilities and uh, stockholders equity. So here uh, you will see preferred uh, stocks uh, cumulative 5% uh, 10, uh, 100 per uh, 2000 shares authorized and uh, assets. Common stock 2.5 per uh, 10, uh, 1 lakh uh, shares authorized. Shares issue, issued and outstanding in 2000. And these are the outstanding shares uh, to calculate the APS. So here is uh, the rules uh, regarding the preferred dividends. Uh, how, how can we calculate? So here we have. Then written earnings, uh, the cumulative uh, total of all earnings, uh, net of our dividends uh, that have been retained and uh, reinvested in the firm since its inception. So uh, here is another example, so you uh, need not uh, that. So statement of written earnings, the statement of written earnings is uh, uh, abbreviated from the statement of stockholder equity and like the statement uh, of shareholder stockholder equity which shows the wall equity account transactions uh, that uh, occurred during a given year the statement of return earnings reconciles the net income and uh, earnings uh, during a given year and any any cash dividends paid and uh, changes in the return earnings between the start and end of the yeah, there is a statement of return earnings and a statement of shareholders equity. So these are the uh, world types of uh, 
uh, statements uh, we have ratio analysis involves methods of calculating and interpreting financial ratios to analyze and monitor the firm's performance types of uh, ratios so there are several types of ratios we have number one liquidity ratios activity ratios debt ratios and profitability ratios that is liquidity ratios activity ratios debt ratios profitability ratios and market ratios these are the types of financial ratios these are uh, which we will use to justify the performance of a firm so there are several uh, guidelines about uh, the using ratio analysis cautions ratios that uh, reveal large deviations from the norms may really indicate the possibility of a problem additional analysis is uh, typically needed to determine the whether there is a problem and to isolate the cause of the problem a single ratio does not generally provide sufficient information from ways that judge the overall performance of the firm. However, even analysis is concerned only with certain specific aspects uh, of a firm's financial positions and one or two ratios may suffice. So here is the several uh, questions regarding the ratios analysis. Liquidity ratio. Actually, liquidity forms the ability to satisfy its short-term obligations as they come due. So the liquidity of a form is measured by its ability to satisfy its short-term obligations as they come to you. liquidity refers to the solvency of a firm's overall financial position the is with which it can pay its will because a common procures to financial distress and Bankruptcy is a low or a declining liquidity. These uh, ratios can provide early signs of cash flow problems and uh, impending business failure. So the liquidity ratios, uh, there are the two basic measures of liquidity, current ratio and quick or acid test ratio. Current ratio, current ratio measures uh, of a liquidity calculated uh, by dividing the firm's current assets by its current liabilities that we are called the current ratios so current assets uh, divided by current uh, liabilities so from the Bartlett company's balance sheet, you will see there is the total current asset. These are the total current liabilities in 2012. Then uh, we have 1.19 or current ratios. After that, we will see quick ratio or acid test ratio. A measure of liquidity calculated by the dividing the firm's current assets 
minus inventory by its current liabilities then we can uh, calculate the quick ratio quick ratio is similar to the current ratio expect uh, that it excludes the inventory which is generally less liquid current assets. The generally low liquidity of inventory results from two primary factors. Many types of inventory cannot be easily sold because they are partially completed items, a special purpose items and the like to inventory is typically sold one credit which means that it becomes an account receivables before being converted into cash that's why the inventory can be deducted from its current asset an additional problem with inventory as a liquid asset is that the times when a companies face the most dire need to liquidity when business is bad are precisely the f the times when it is most difficult to convert inventory into cash by selling it the quick ratio is calculated current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities so uh, in the Bartlett's example we will see these are the total current asset minus inventory divided by current liabilities uh, then uh, we have uh, the quick ratio is 1.51 activity ratios activity ratios measures the speed with which various accounts are converted into sales or cash inflows or outflows in a sense activity ratios measures how efficiently a firm operates along a variety of dimensions such as inventory management disbursement and collections a number of ratios are available for measuring the activity of the most important current accounts which include inventory accounts receivables and accounts levels so inventory turnover the activity ratios inventory turnover measures the activity over liquidity of a firm's inventory commonly measures the activity or liquidity of the firm's inventory so uh, you will see inventory turnover can be calculated the uh, cost of goods sold divided by inventory so Bartlett's uh, balance sheet in 2012 we will uh, see the cost of goods sold to like 88,000 divided by inventory to 2,89,000 so there has the 7.2 turnover yearly turnover so uh, in inventory turnover survey to 20 would not be unusual for a grocery stores uh, whose goods are highly precise perishable and must be sold quickly whereas an aircraft manufacturer might turn its inventory just to four times per year so uh, here uh, you will uh, see how many days years of inventory we can uh, find uh, 365 uh, divided by 7.2 that is a uh, 50.7 days uh, the inventory is that means uh, inventory turns uh, in this uh, way uh, inventory is uh, are 50.7 days and uh, inventory turns uh, here is the uh, warehouse inventory comes in here and uh, out is here so 
uh, in this uh, warehouse has uh, 50.7 days 50.7 days of inventory so uh, in this uh, way um, uh, we can find the age of our inventory then uh, average collection period the average amount of time needed to collect accounts receivables average collection period or average is of accounts receivables is useful in evaluating credit and collection policies it's uh, arrived at by dividing the average daily sales into accounts receivables balances average collection period accounts receivable divided by average sales per day and how can we get the average sales per day annual sales divided by 365 so from our Bratlett's uh, balance sheet 2012 you will see uh, we have the accounts receivables of uh, 5 lakh uh, 3000 and uh, annual sales 3 lakh 74 thousand so that, that can be divided by 365 that we can get the average sales per day at 8400 22 so uh, here uh, here is the average collection period is 59.7 days so whenever uh, you sell today and uh, for uh, uh, as like you sell one taka today so that uh, one taka can be returned to you as a cash within 59.7 uh, days or uh, 60 days so it is uh, too many times uh, to collect mm, uh, your uh, selling amount so average uh, collection period is uh, meaningful only in the relations of the firm's credit terms if the Bartlett's company uh, extends a 30 day credit terms uh, to customers as the an average collection period is 59.7 days may indicate a poorly managed the credit work collections department were both so that is the poor management and credit uh, the, the collection department were both it is also possible uh, that the length and collection period resulted from the uh, intentional uh, relaxations of credit term enforcement uh, in response to comparative pressures so if the farm had extended uh, 60 decade terms the form 59.7 days average collection period would be quite acceptable clearly additional information is needed to evaluate the effectiveness of the firm's credit and collections policies average payment period average payment period uh, where average is of accounts payable is calculated in the same manner of the average collections period so uh, average collections period is related to the sales uh, and average payment period is related to the parcels whenever you purchase uh, that is accruals and uh, you have to pay the amount uh, how many days uh, take to pay your purses money purses uh, uh, purses goods uh, money so uh, uh, that can be calculated as accounts payable divided by hours purchase per day accounts payable uh, um, per day so uh, uh, in our examples uh, we will uh, see that our uh, accounts bubbles are three lakh eighty two thousand and average purchase per day can be calculated in the, uh, in this way here i said the bartlett company's purchase equal to 70 percent of its uh, cost of goods sold in accruals and uh, rest 30 uh, percent uh, can be cash so here is the bartlett company purchase uh, equal to 70 percent of its cost of uh, goods sold in 2012 
so uh, uh, you can uh, you can uh, that is the sell selling selling revenue and uh, you say 70 percent are uh, uh, related to the uh, our parses so uh, in uh, divided by 365 then we can get 95.4 days so whenever you purchase a good from a shop and uh, you return that's a check up after the 95.4 days average after the three months so that is uh, too many times uh, to provide your credit so the figure is meaningful only in the relationship to average credit terms extended to the firm the Bartlett company suppliers have extended on an average 30 day credit terms an analyst would give Bartlett's a low credit rating because uh, it was uh, taking too long to pay its bill. Prospective lenders and suppliers uh, of uh, trade credit are uh, interested in the average payment period because it provides uh, insight into the firm's bill pay patterns. Total asset turnover. After that, we will see total asset turnover uh, indicates the efficiency with uh, which the firm uses its asset to generate sales. The total asset turnover indicates the efficiency with which the firm uses its assets to generate sales. Total asset turnover is calculated from total asset turnover equal to sales divided by total assets so uh, here is the uh, total sales divided by total asset that is 8.5 times per year generally higher a firm's total asset turnover the more efficiently its asset have been used its measures is uh, probably of greatest interest of management because it indicates whether the firm's operations have been financially efficient after the debt ratios uh, here is the financial leverage or operating leverage uh, debt ratios uses uh, uses several things uh, cover as a debt ratio debt ratio equal to debt ratio equal to total liabilities divided by total assets here is the debt ratios uh, then uh, times and restaurant ratios uh, equal to earnings before interest in and taxes divided by taxes so we will uh, discuss it uh, next classes uh, fixed payment coverage ratios uh, formula here is profitability uh, ratios uh, gross profit margin sales minus cost of goods sold divided by sales that is uh, uh, gross profit margin after that operating profit margin operating uh, profit divided by sales net profit margin net profit divided by sales uh, eps earning available to shareholders divided by number of outstanding shares return to total asset earnings available to common stakeholders divided by total asset roa return on total asset roe return one equity earnings available to common stakeholders divided by common stock equity so uh, you can uh, see the bartlett's company balance sheet mark uh, market ratios price uh, price earning ratios market price per share of the common stock divided by earning per share market or book uh, book ratio market divided by book ratio uh, market value per share of common stock equal to common stock equity by number of shares of common stock outstanding so uh, here is the total uh, ratios which are uh, uh, which are using for calculating or judging our financial uh, positions of a firm. Summarizing all uh, ratios here is the liquidity, activity, uh, debt, uh, profitability, market. So these are the ratios which are uh, generally used for measuring the performance. Another has the dew point analysis. 
so do you want formula do you want analysis of the system used to uh, dissect the firm's financial statement and uh, the assets financial conditions uh, so it is used to do the financial condition it measures the income statement and balance sheet into two summary measures of profitability return on assets and return on uh, equity so do you want formula a uh, system first begins uh, to get the net profit margins uh, which measures the firm's profitability or sales and the total assets turnover which uh, indicates uh, how how efficiently the firm has uh, used uh, uh, its asset to generate sales in the dupont formula the uh, product of these uh, two ratios results are written on total assets roa return net profit margin into total asset turnover so here is the net profit margin uh, formula uh, then uh, this total asset uh, turnover sales divided by total assets earnings available uh, for common stockholders divided by sales then sales uh, uh, can be deducted earnings available for common stockholders divided by total assets so here is the result uh, roi is 6.1% and modified the one formula roe uh, roa into f l m financial leverage multiplier ROI formula has is yes, and uh, uh, financial leverage multiple total asset divided by uh, common stock equity. Then uh, there has the 6.1 percent into 2.06 or 12.6 percent. ROI calculated using the more modified. this all about today stay home stay safe try to maintain a safe social distance try to wash your hands frequently in a day subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh